first up, we have Sasha Pavlik, who will be talking with us today about mathematical numerics and special functions. Thank you, Dan. Welcome, everybody. I'd like to, first being the first, I'd like to say about why Mathematica is really a great tool to do numerical modeling. It provides the convenience of a task-oriented super functions, which pack extensive set of algorithms and provide for automatic algorithm selections for algorithm which is optimal for your problem you are asking for and is also most, most efficient. It also features performance by use of efficient libraries like GMP, LAPAC, MKL, etc. Also implementing the latest and greatest algorithms and providing for choice between these algorithms which is optimal for your problem. Mathematica has a reliable arithmetic because it extends and ex uh, supports an extended precision arithmetic. It, whenever you are working with efficient machine precision computations, Mathematica will fall back on extended precision seamlessly when there are ex uh, double precision exceptions. It also provides all the, the tools a numerical modeler needs in order to achieve uh, the task he has at hand. So with that, I'll start with overviewing the representation number and speak about the arithmetic, which is basically at the core of numerical computation. So when we have a, a, a real number, it's encoded as a, some sequence of digits D here with some particular base, and there is an exponent which records a scale of that number. This information can be retrieved using real digits. Uh, so, uh, with the double precision floating point numbers, the, in a, which is typically recorded in the base 2, the number of digits is strictly 53 and the exponent is jammed to be between this, this number. So, this means that there is a smallest positive number and the largest positive number representable in a double precision uh, IEEE floating point numbers. And these numbers are listed here. When we uh, go to extended precision arithmetic, there is no limitation for the number of digits. It's basically only limited by your memory, but there are limitations for the exponent. The maximal and the minimal exponent for the positive real numbers are given here, and whenever Mathematica performs arithmetic operations which cross these boundaries, an overflow will result when we cross it from above, and underflow will result when we cross it from below. When we are dealing with a, a you know, uh, when we take, say, a, a largest m machine representable number and multiply it by two, it will no longer be possible to represent it as a machine number, and therefore Mathematica seamlessly switches to extended precision, which you can see here with, with that precision there, and provides for you to, uh, a possibility to carry uh, on these computations. When you input a floating point numbers, which you would need to do routinely, and enter a small number of decimal digits, Mathematica automatically interprets that as a machine precision number. When you continue and type more digits, then Mathematica understands that this is an extended precision number. If you ever need to type in a number which has a small number of significant digits, but some precision, then you would need to use a double backtick to specify the precision, and double, uh, double double backtick, so to speak, to specify the accuracy. So here is, for instance, 234 is understood as a machine number, the next number is an extended precision, and uh, th this number is specified to a 20 decimal digits, this is specified to 16 uh, decimal digits after the floating point, and that is an inexact zero. When a precision is very small and there is no significant digits to extract, Mathematica will display that number pinked and uh, provide a message that no significant digits are available to display. So now it becomes important, uh, we need to, uh, to uh, introduce a notion of precision and accuracy of the numbers to explain the rest. So for that, we will define two numbers. One of them would be uh, some positive number, in the, which will contain exactly 29 decimal digits after the uh, dot, and some zero number. So let's uh, uh, introduce, as, and we should also think about these numbers basically as, as a, a sort of an interval, because if you, if you think of all the real numbers which contain many more digits, we will identify all of those numbers with this number where the decimal expansion sort of is the same. So for a given number, a precision is a measure of this relative uncertainty of the value. We will say that inexact number is some exact number in the middle of that interval and one multiplied into one plus or minus an epsilon, where epsilon is defined in terms of precision of a number like that. The accuracy is a measure of an absolute uncertainty, and therefore no multiplier is, ne is, is needed here. And uh, it is defined, as they are defined in such a way that their difference always measures the scale of the value. So real exponent, or, so let's, let's actually evaluate the precision. Let's see, the precision of a number x is a little higher than 29, which is the number of digits here. Precision of a number y is exactly zero because a relative uncertainty is not defined. The number here is zero, and you multiply zero into whatever you get zero. 
The accuracy of X and Y here are defined, and they are both exactly the same because there are 29 digits after this. And the real exponent for zero, of course, is not defined. The real exponent of X, uh, which is the difference of those two numbers, will give you the same thing as a base 10 logarithm of the number. So with that, I need to um, go on and, and bring up a notion of two special precisions in mathematics. Dollar machine precision is an extended precision such that there are exactly 53 that's, uh, binary digits in it. So it's basically an extended precision equivalent of a double precision I triple E number. And a simple machine precision refers to that double precision number. So say if we set exact now one into machine precision, we get a double precision number. If we set it into a dollar machine precision, we get extended precision number with the same number of binary digits. Uh, it is also important to realize, uh, for the reasons will, which will become clear later, that the machine precisions are treated as the lowest, pre uh, lowest precision available. So if you are asking for a precision of this list which contains precisions of two different things, Mathematica will pick the minimal precision, and in this case, the minimal is machine precision. Although machine precision sort of is, you know, when you, when you replace it with an extended precision, you will get five as being the lower precision. So this is important to keep in mind. Now, when Mathematica performs an arithmetic operations, we can uh, encounter a, a loss of significant figures. For instance, imagine that you are adding two numbers which are close but opposite in a sign. In that case, most of these digits will cancel, and actually the reasonable expectation is to expect any software to return uh, those small number of significant digits. And Mathematica, in fact, does. It tells you that the number of significant digits in, in this uh, number is only 2.8. Now, uh, this is achieved through a precision tracking. Mathematica automatically keeps track of precision and sort of re reduces the precision when it detects these cancellations. It is, uh, I mean, it, it is a common practice to do a fixed precision computation likewise, and in, in the cases when such things happen, then the remaining digits are you know, somewhat ambiguously filled with zero, but this is a convention. So in the, in the fixed precision computation, you get that. Now, a significance arithmetic refers to how Mathematica keeps track of this precision, and it does this by using linearization of the error. So when you multiply two numbers, the exact error would be given by this polynomial, where when we linearize it, we only we discard this term, which, which is much smaller typically. Well, uh, well, addition is done exactly, but the power is also doing this linearization. So in order to appreciate this, the usefulness of significance arithmetic, we will consider a tenth map, which maps a unit interval into a unit interval. When we perform this using the exact arithmetic, you will see that these numbers sort of become a subtraction of a number, a subtraction of two numbers, and these numbers will increase in scale as we progress in the sequence. And therefore, we will encounter this same cancellation phenomenon, which we will see in, uh, just, just now. So imagine that you would start here with an e, with in machine precision starting value and will continue to iterate. And we will plot here an, a, a log scale sort of difference between uh, numbers obtained here using machine precision and the exact numbers evaluated to precision 50. And you see that the sequence will deteriorate precision as we go on, which means that after 50 iterations, basically no correct digits are left in the answer. When we will reter repeat the same computation with dollar machine precision, which by, by doing so we enable precision tracking, we will see that the precisions of the numbers become smaller and smaller, and ultimately in the end we only, one get, uh, we only get one correct decimal digit. We can, uh, we can use a dollar mean precision in order to turn off a precision tracking below a certain value, and that's exactly what's happening. And although these digits sort of are not correct, um, or maybe not correct, we ask Mathematica to keep them. Now, the, the nature of error estimate in significance arithmetic is pessimistic. So you can actually get a correct, you can notice that you get a lot more correct digits than the Mathematica tells you, and it is important to realize when that happens. So an example would be a, 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 any stable procedure, numerically stable procedure. So let's consider the largest eigenvalue computation by essentially iterating the matrix and renormalizing the result. So here we have a code which performs just that. We do a fixed point multiplication of a ma matrix into a number divided, uh, into, sorry, into a vector divided by its norm, and we start with a random number. So we will consider a four by four Hilbert matrix and try to evaluate its, uh, its eigenvalue, excuse me, I have to define that. Uh, well, uh, its, its eigenvalue to 47 digits, we get exactly that. Now, if we do the same computation with a, without fixed precision, just using our variable precision computation, we will see that the number of digits, correct digits reported, is less, although you, we will see that these numbers are correct. 
And we can ascertain that by solving the problem using exact algebra in mathematica and numerically evaluating the result, and we see that all of the precisions are correct. So sometimes it is beneficial for the efficiency sake to use fixed precision computation, but that is only safe to do when you know the problem is stable. Now, uh, in order to proceed on, we will. Uh, I, I need to say that in addition to numbers, and Mathematica has so-called mathematical constants like a pi and an e, and those are you can think of them as symbols which act like number, which means that you can take any of those numbers and set them to any requested precision, or say to 150, and Mathematica will compute the value of that constant and return it as an approximation. Now, using these mathematical constants, you can wield uh, a more complicated expressions which are needed for your modeling. A numeric function would be a function in Mathematica which evaluates on the inexact input. So when you feed an inexact input into a sign, it will get you an inexact output. Likewise, do special functions or other functions. You get inexact complex number and get their absolute value out. Now, another feature uh, of numerical functions is that they, their uh, output tracks the precision of the input. Consider an arc tangent, and we will evaluate it with a machine precision. We get a machine precision out. Now, we will set that to precision 16, and we will get a precision 16 out. And now, as we increase the precision of the input, the precision of the output tracks it and gets back the result. So here is a little manipulate which will take different functions and different arguments to it and will set and will show you how the precision of the output changes with the precision of the input. And you see that they are all linear, right, with the different slopes. So uh, that allows us, for instance, to do, uh, to do things like try to evaluate an explicit exact number to a requested number of digits by essentially feeding it uh, arguments which are more and more precise. Now, the number of, uh, total number of numeric functions in Mathematica is well over 200. So we can get that, extract them all of the, in the system context, all of those numbers which have attribute and numeric function are constant. And for your later for, for use, all this is the entire list which is clickable into documentation so you can look at what, what, they, what it does. Um, now, uh, precision of the output in a numeric function may be well smaller than the precision of the input. And to consider such an example, we will, we will get, uh, look at a finite difference approximation for a derivative. So this particular code constructs an approximation using a difference with a forward difference with step h, and will construct an approximation of the derivative of order p of a function f of x, univariate function. So let's evaluate that function and consider an example. We will take a black box function f of x and construct uh, an approximation of an order 2. When we use a symbolic nature of Mathematica to verify that, you see that indeed expansion gives you a second order derivative, and the error term here is h to the 3. So that's accurate, you know, up to h to the uh, h squared. This is an accurate representation. So now let's try to use this in order to do a numerical computation of a derivative. So let's take a fun special function Fresnel and try to evaluate its second derivative using the step of 10 to a minus 6 at some point, which is, you know, the precision 30. We get that the precision of the result is actually 16, so we've lost 15 significant digits in doing so, and using the direct uh, function of derivative will get us a lot more digits. Now, approximating higher order derivatives will give you bigger precision loss. So say order 4 here, you lose 16 digits, so you only get 5 digits correctly. So now, suppose you would really want to compute the fourth order derivative using this finite difference method, but you would want 30, 30 uh, digits out. In order to get that, we have a wonderful function called n, which finds the numerical value of the expression. So let's evaluate the symbolic expression for that fourth order derivative and produce a black box function which takes in a real, uh, prints the precision of the input and computes that approximation. So now we will, when we evaluate something to a precision 30, we'll get back what we had. Now if we ask n to do stuff, then we will actually see that the Mathematica automatically raised precision in order to get us the, the necessary precision, uh, requested precision of the output. Um, well, it, it, we can limit how much of a precision n will raise by using the dollar max extra precision, and that's seen here. If we are asking for a precision 10, evaluating with a precision 30 will produce a message that that's impossible. So setting locally max extra precision will let you let you do the job. Um, now, uh, in, in I would like to wrap up now and sort of consider a nice example of 
uh, you know, trying to build up a function which is based on our super solvers. So many of our just numerical solvers, like any integrate, and dissolve, and and uh, minimize, find root, and all of the others, take a working precision. And the working precision option ele uh, essentially lets you specify the precision of the intermediate computations. But it doesn't really mean that the answer will be given to that precision. The actual precision, that, so the actual uh, precision of the output is controlled by two go options, precision goal and accuracy goal, and with them specified mathematical attempts to get a numerical error of the result to be less than that. So consider here a functional of functions of real arguments which computes a norm of uh, L LQ norm uh, uh, of real functions, and um, uh, some, some features of this is we take that Q, which is supposed to be a real number, and we take a function and a symbol X. We compute an input to an integral. Now, in doing the uh, this computation, Mathematica can actually lower the precision of the expression. So in order to, for any integrate not to complain, we have to specify the working precision, which is a working precision of this input. Now, we raise a max recursion to get some number back, and once we obtain the result, we want to lower the precision of the result in order to ascertain that the number of digits actually are accurate. And this is a safeguard in case when n integrate will return and evaluate it. So we've evaluated this and now actually let's try to see what it does. We will compute an L, uh, a four norm of such a function with a, in a machine precision number, with an extended precision number, and we see that it does exactly track the precisions. So we can actually uh, use, uh, plug it into an end framework and obtain the values of the pi norm of PDF of gamma distribution and get some value out of it. Now I wanted to sort of wrap up with, um, with uh, trying to sort of do an LT norm of another PDF of a you know, Laplace distribution. And you'd see that a curious feature of it is that it can attains a minimum here. And we want to know where that minimum is. So we will be able to plug in this numerical function we've constructed into a find minimum, say that the minimum is somewhere between those two points, specify the working precision, and the mathematical will obtain as the value of the minimum as well as the position of the minimum with the requested precision. So with this, I'd like to thank you so much for, for attention, and uh, uh, back to Dan. Uh, well, thank you very much, Sasha. Someone uh, submitted a question, uh, what does fractional precision mean? Well, a fractional precision, so uh, as, as we would look back, at the precision is actually a, a, an, uh, something which is relative to the value of the number, as we will see here. So that means that if your number here is not an exact power of, of 10, for instance, then the scale of that number is fractional, so precision can really be fractional. But in addition, I, uh, it, it is worth reminding that, binary, that the representation of real numbers in Mathematica is binary. Binary. And the precision you are asking for typically is, is decimal. So the conversion between these two multi involves multiplying into a logarithm of 10 base 2, which is itself inexact. So it's natural to get inexact precision out. Thank you, Dan. Excellent. Thank you very much. And for more information about all of the things that uh, Sasha just talked about, feel free to log on to reference.wolfram.com and you can get a lot of great examples and information.